So I'm going to try to pick up and do what you normally do, David, if that's all right, okay? But to all of you who are here, we're so glad to have you. We welcome you. I'm glad all of you are here. Let's stand as we begin to sing. Holy is he. Everyone standing, please. Go ahead. Give us an intro there, Mr. Reed. Oh. 
when it was so hot, remember the last July, and you prayed for cooler weather? Thank you very much. Now, if you would, uh, those of us who are praying for hot weather, we will remember your prayers come June and July and August uh, this year. So, uh, again, we're glad you're here. Just a few announcements uh, we want to call your attention to, please. Valentine Banquet, our church leadership team. I made that decision that we would have that on on the Sunday, Sunday night, five o'clock. Our church Valentine banquet here. There will be a sign up, two sign ups. One sign up that you're coming to eat at five o'clock. The second sign up is that you want to do. You want to be part of the program, whatever the program might be. Uh, Brooke, then I said you sing, sweetheart. Is that right? <laughs> You better have a talk with your husband. And uh, I, I know, Lord, we love you for that. Anyways, no, no, no. But if you would like to be a, a part of our uh, entertainment, there's all, there will also be a sign up sheet. We'll make sure you get back there beginning this Wednesday. But that'll be on the 14th of July. Please remember that, okay? And we'll need you to sign up. We love them. We're going to have it at 5 o'clock. And we're going to have it at 5 o'clock. What did I say? I just want to make sure you're listening. That's all. That's what vibes are for. February 14th, February 14th, Valentine's Day. You see the announcement. Appreciate Donnie getting that up there for us at 5 o'clock. The reason we want to have it at 5 o'clock, we're doing that in honor of, our, of all of us who don't like to drive at night. So by getting you here at 5, the sun will be up a little bit longer. We'll be finished by 6.30, 20 to 7. You can get home in plenty of time and not have to worry about getting back in the dark, okay? But we do need you to sign up for us on that on February 14th. We'll tell you this, that on the 21st of February, Lord's Supper, and uh, once again, we will have Lord's Supper as we've had it before. We'll come up in three sections because we're not passing plates just yet, so we'll come up and we'll have... Uh, the, uh, the, the plate. Do you remember how to use those little cups? I hope so. We'll have, we'll have some deacons around that day to help you if you do not remember. But that'll be on the 21st. Also, Wild Game Festival. Wild Game Feast. Six o'clock. New River's going to be playing that night. We've got uh, um, a speaker. David, who's our speaker that night? Terry Terry Pendro, he'll be here speaking that night. That's going to be a sign up, and uh, there'll be a, a, a small charge for that. But, we, and, but, but, but here's we want you to bring friends. More than that, we want you to bring friends who are lost, who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, because this is a grand opportunity to share the gospel message of Jesus with folks, particularly who maybe not will even darken the doors of a church house. So that'll be on the 13th of March. We've got a lot going on. Uh, also, somewhere in April or May, we'll give you that the date, will be our Children's Spring Festival, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Then, before you turn around, we're in the month of June. Vacation Bible School. Yes, it will be here before we know it. Deborah Long is our Vacation Bible School Director. We'll be helping her, and she'll be asking many of you. And it's going to take all of us. I didn't ask you if you've ever taught before. I said it's going to take all of us, all of us, to make sure we have a great, successful Bible school. And we're going to concentrate, not just with our folks, but the folks across the street in the neighborhood as well. So we are going to do our very best to uh, bring children into our church house because if children come, mamas and daddies follow. That I can promise you. Also, we want to remind you on the 28th of February, we start the, uh, there is a men's Bible study at 5 o'clock on Sunday. I believe it's a six or eight week uh, uh, study. And David needs to order those books. David Cool does, our men's director. And if you'll see him, uh, he will certainly appreciate you getting that done. We're about $700 away from Lottie Moon. We're going to extend next Sunday, I think, the last Sunday of July, okay? So our goal is $5,000. I don't know when the last time was we hit $5,000 in 
lot of you. So we're going to do it this time. And if we fall short next week, bring your checkbook because I will take up another offering. I'll ask you to pull your checkbook out in the service and write another check. Yeah, I just want you to know that. I expect you to do that. You hear me? I expect you to do it. I'm not asking you to do it. I expect you to do it. Okay? That's not much of an expectation. You can do it. We're going to hit that building. We're going to make that building. And uh, because I want to, I, I don't know, when's the last time we hit 5,000? I can't remember the last time. Well, I, we're going we're gonna to surprise everybody in Richmond. We're going to let them know we're forced to be reckoned with, okay? <laughs> so we're going to do this $700 place. Maybe you've given your body to an offer. Oh, we're so grateful. Whatever the amount was, we're so grateful. But please, let's see if we couldn't get it taken care of next week, okay? See if you can do that. Do you realize if we all gave, let me see, if we all gave 20%, let's say that you gave $100 for a lot of money, and, you, and, and if you give 20% more, that just be $20 next week, do you realize that if we all gave 20% of what we've given, we would more than take in $5,000, okay? Some gave 100, some gave 500, some gave 1,000. That's not much to add. So all I'm asking, some gave 10, that's great. But you gave what you could, that's great. But what I'm saying, this money is to take the gospel around the world. And very soon, uh, thanks to Woods Garrett and, and Barry, we're going to get the, uh, uh, the dental chair loaded in our crate, and we're going to get it on its way to St. Kitts, and uh, we're excited about that, as they are excited down there to get it. So we will let you know, and I may need a couple of you to help us. Uh, some of you stronger fellows like Dorothy and uh, John, mm -hmm. uh, some of you folks are a little bit stronger than me, uh, come out and help us. Uh, he's going to put it as a front end loader. Is that what it's called? Hello. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Money in I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate it. Mr. Garrett getting that thing built up for us. We're going to get it. We're going to get it out of here, all the way from here to West Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, all the way to St. Kitts, Nevis, in the Caribbean. So we're excited about that. So glad you're here. We're going to bow our heads. And I want you to join with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Now, loving Father. We remember this day, we remember Luke Ruby Watson as we uh, bid uh, Terry goodbye yesterday, we pray for his family. Jesus, and we move forward. We pray for his sweet wife and all of his family as they begin making adjustments in their everyday life. We pray today for those who are not here. There are many who just want and need to stay in because of COVID-19. We realize that. And we pray your blessing on them. But more than that, we're grateful for these who are here today. And Lord, we just pray that you're going to continue to bless our church. We thank you for those who are so faithful in their finances and their tithes and offerings. It is a privilege to be able to give to you. I mean, after all, it's all yours anyways. Lord, we, the people have been so faithful with our mission offering. Lord, we're just so close to that $5,000 goal. I know we can do it. I know we can. So put it on the hearts of God's people that are here to do it. I know they will. I just know they will. And we're doing it, Lord, to take the gospel around the world. The people who are lost and dying and going to hell unless they hear the word and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Lord, we pray for our church as we look down the road in February, March, April, and May and all into the summer. Lord, you know we have many needs here. We're seeking a youth director. You know that, Lord. A youth leader that 
to lead and pull together again our young people, direct our paths as we talk seriously with individuals. I pray. I pray that uh, today you would bless David. See, David's uh, at home today. That's his sweet family. We miss him so. May he know that we miss him ever so much. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit always to fall fresh on this place. We pray that as you come, while we sing hymns and choruses to you, that your Spirit will continue to remain in this place. There are many, many open seats. We pray that you will be seated in all of those seats. And then where the seats are taken, you reside in the hearts of those who sit in the seats. Loving Father, we thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank you for what you do in our midst. We thank you for what you do even when we're not aware of it. 24-7. Hallelujah. What a Savior we serve. We love you. We adore you. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing one more hymn. Oh, my, it's been a long time. My Jesus, I love thee. One of the great hymns of the church. You remember? It's been a while since we've sung it, isn't it? My Jesus, I love thee. Let it breathe. Let's stand as we sing. Sing it from your heart now. Let me hear you. All right, read it. Hit it. Back there, and he, uh, he 
he's all right. He's just protecting himself. And then I guess, uh, George, your mother's with your daddy today, see? Or wherever. But I miss him, don't you? Yes. I miss you, miss you, miss you. Anyway, when you see them, let them know that, okay? But the thing is, it's crazy because, you know, the, the longer I'm with you, I, I, I understand. It's, it's, it's interesting. I, when you're not here, I know it. Isn't that crazy? You know, I know where most of you sit. You know, I mean, I've been able to think. I mean, uh, Mr. Long is not here, and uh, Joe is not here. Uh, Jimmy's here, I'm glad Jimmy's here, and mm -hmm. Sunday. And uh, Deborah's not here, I don't see Deborah back there. And, uh, I, you know, I don't see uh, Beth, and I don't see Matthew over there. And just, I, you know, I, and, and then the sisters, I miss them. Um, so be careful, I know where you see them. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, you know, you might call the roll one of these. But anyway, I am so appreciative of your presence today. The title of the message is, Does Jesus Really Mean That? Does Jesus Really Mean That? We're going to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. We're going to begin there at verse 38. Matthew, chapter 5, 38 is where we began. And we're going to go down to about verse, oh, let's say 43. And the title of the message is, Did Jesus Really Mean That? Has someone ever said after you said something profound, Do you really mean that? Do you really mean that? Did Jesus really mean that? If you're able, if you're able to stand as we honor the reading of God's word, please. From Matthew chapter 5, beginning there, at verse 38. You have heard that it is said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. And whoever compelled you to go one mile, go with him too. Hold it right there. This is free, all right? In Roman times, in Jesus' time, the Roman military, if they stopped you, they could command you to carry their backpack or their knapsack or whatever it was. You had to carry it a mile. That was law. Didn't matter who you were, didn't matter what you had to do. If they stopped you, a Roman soldier, he could command you. And he, listen, if you did not carry it, he'd kill you on the spot. He had that authority from Rome. So Jesus said, when that Roman soldier stops you and asks you to Carry his knapsack a mile, carry the second mile. People hated that, but it was law. That's what Jesus means. Maybe you knew that, maybe you didn't. Let's continue reading. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You've heard that it was said. You shall love your neighbor. Hate your enemy. But, don't you just, sometimes I have a fit with the Lord when I read what he's saying and then he says, but, because I know he's getting ready to say something that's hard for me to do. But, I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. May God bless to us the reading of His holy inspired every word. You bow your heads as we pray. Your loving Father, I pray that we will learn from these difficult sayings of yours. 
to tell you that we have accomplished them? No, I haven't. I try. And I try harder every day. The fact of the matter is they're so hard sometimes to do. But I'm trying. And I'm not going to give up. And I know where I fall so. And thanks for reminding me. Bless us now, I pray. It's a prayer we make in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thinking along these lines and some of the difficult sayings of Jesus, I have some difficult sayings for the men, if you'll listen to me today, men. If you're ready. Of course, we're going to talk about some difficult sayings and rules of the Lord Jesus. I want you to hear some of these difficult rules that you and I have to live by. Number one, the female always makes the rules. <laughs> Number two, the rules are subject to change at any time without prior notification. Number three, no male can possibly know all the rules. Number four, if the female suspects the male knows all the rules, she must, she must immediately change some or all of the rules. Number five, the female is never wrong. Number six, if the female it is if the, if the female is wrong, it is because of a flagrant misunderstanding, which was the direct result of something the male did or said wrong. Number seven, if rule six applies, the male must apologize immediately for causing the misunderstanding. Number eight. The female can change her mind at any given point in time. Number nine, the male must never change his mind without express written consent from the female. Number ten, one of these days, Greek will get this, okay, I promise you. Number ten, the female has every right to be angry or upset at any time. Number 11, the male must remain calm at all times unless the female wants him to get angry or upset. Number 12, the female must under no circumstances let the male know whether or not she wants him to be angry or upset. And now number 13, any attempt to document these rules could result in bodily harm. Thus are some of the difficult sayings from our wives or females. Uh, and if you're not married, you'll learn how to appreciate these in the days to come. You know, Jesus said some difficult things, things that were very, very difficult to understand. You know, even some of his disciples had difficulty in understanding them. They hadn't mastered them all, no. I mean, we're all sinners saved by grace. And uh, there's none righteous, no, not one. But even to the point that the sayings of Jesus were sometimes and are so difficult that there were many of his disciples that said, hey, I'm not going to follow this. There's no way I can do it. Think about some of the hard sayings that Jesus said. He said this, you could commit murder in your heart. He said you could commit adultery just by looking and lusting at someone. He said in order to be his disciple <coughs> you had to do hold on you had to hate three of the most blessed groups of people you love. He said this over in Luke. He said, you've got to hate mother and father, brother and sister, wife and children, if you want to be my disciple. What? Come on. That's a hard saying. He said, you must pray for those who persecute you. 
That's a hard saying, folks. He said, if somebody asks you to go one mile, doesn't matter what you do, you go the second mile. He said, you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. I mean, come on, folks. These are hard sayings. Do you really understand them? Sometimes I ask myself, do I really understand them? A pastor friend of mine was telling me about a time he'd gone to a small college for a Christian Emphasis Week. And that week they were talking about some of the hard sayings of Jesus Christ. And they were in a small room with about 50 students one evening. And a student stood up and he said, the teachings of Jesus Christ are difficult for me because I'm not sure I understand them. And then another student stood up and he said, but I see that just the other way. The teachings of Jesus Christ are difficult for me because I think I do understand them. I just have a hard time doing them. The fact of the matter is, as students of God's word, we have to see and understand those hard sayings that he said in the first century, they are just as relevant in the 21st century. No ands, if, buts, and out. Over there in John chapter 6, verse 60, the Bible says this, Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, talking about some of the hard sayings, when they heard this said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? And then if you come down to verse 66 of chapter 6 of the book of John, look at what it says. The Bible says, from that time, many of the disciples went back, listen, and walked with him no more. Wow. They said, uh, that, <laughs> there's no way that man can do what he's saying. He won't be the love people that hate me. What's he own? What, what did he have for breakfast this morning? What do you mean I've got to love people that hate me? What do you mean I've got to love people who, who talk bad about me? What do you mean? I want to punch their lights out. Did you hear what they said about my wife? Did you hear what he said about my husband? I want to go over there and just give him a piece of my mind. Listen to me. Giving a piece of your mind and getting even with people, there is no such clause in the Bible. Nowhere. That's up to them. And you see, when we are confronted with these difficult sayings of Jesus Christ, we have to stop and maybe stand and look at ourselves in the mirror. You see, he says, then you've got to respond to harshness with kindness. You've got to respond to cruelty with tenderness. You've got to respond to hurt with forgiveness. You've got to respond to adversity with perseverance. You've got to respond to hate with love. And if you don't think that you're being challenged as a born-again believer, I will tell you, I am. One of the most difficult things, and your pastor's just confessing to you, okay? Just going to confess to you. Okay? So you know what I struggle with. I know I'm supposed to love everybody. And I'm doing my best to do that. But I want to confess to you, I have a hard time with this LGBT mess that's going on in this country. I have a hard time loving this people. I'm just being honest with you. I do. I know I have to. Because God's word says I must if I'm his child. 
And I'm working on that. But for me to tell you that I'm not incensed, I would be lying. Okay? So I've just confessed to you. Okay? So you'll know. I don't have it all together. Okay? But I'm working on it. I really am. But I wanted you to know that. But we have to understand that Jesus was very, very serious when he talked about it. You know, a soft answer turns away wrath. We try that, it really does. Forgiveness is indeed better than vengeance. It really, really is. Love is the greatest force on the planet. It really, really is. And as far as Jesus is concerned, day in and day out, matter of fact, Jesus does not care whether I like or dislike or want to uh, dislike this, uh, this gender movement, LGBT movement. He doesn't care. He said, Benny, if you want to mind, you're going to love them because I died for them. Because I died for them, I love them. Because I love them, I expect you to love them. Wow. That's hard. Hard. Maybe not for you, but it is for me. But I'm not going to let the devil win. I'm not going to let him dictate to me what I'm thinking. Listen. Jesus said, these are some hard seeds. These are some hard seeds. And it's for us today. It isn't for us uh, after we die when we get to glory. Listen, Jesus, what he said, he meant what he meant, he said. People don't like to hear that. So let me tell you very quickly this morning as we close. Let me tell you a couple, three things that we can do when we deal with the hard sayings of Jesus. Number one, do not retaliate. Never retaliate. Now listen to me. Jesus is referring here to what is known in Exodus chapters 22, 23, 24, listen to me, don't lose me on this one. It's called the Lex Talonis. That's Latin. For do not retaliate. You'll find that in the books, uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 22, 23, 24. Jesus is borrowing that concept when he says, you've heard it said, but I tell you, turn the other cheek. Jesus means that we must not return Hurt for hurt. We must not. Two wrongs never make a right. And sometimes, I don't know about you, sometimes I just wanted to get so even with somebody who hurt me. But get even, as I said, is nowhere found in the Bible. I want to get my pound of flesh. It's nowhere found in the Bible. Come on, folks. If we're his disciples, he expects us to live that way. That is, let me tell you, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me tell you something. The hardest thing you'll ever do is live a Christian life. I want you to know that. I want you to know that up front. This is what's expected of you as you grow in grace and knowledge and wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, it's not pretty. And sometimes you won't hear this preaching or teaching because these are indeed difficult stories. But ladies and gentlemen, it's the truth. Jesus said it and he meant it. And he expects us. He doesn't ask us. He expects us to do it. When I was in Texas, I heard a story that has stayed with me all these years. When we went to Texas there in 74, it was kind of a new experience for us because McGowan or I didn't really ever been to Texas. Loved it. Texas is a great place. But we learned uh, that people have, uh, they have small farms of 40, 50, 60 acres. Sometimes they raise maybe 25, 35 cattle. The story was told about these two men, each a farmer and a gardener, next to each other. And all they had was just a simple fence that, that split their property. Well, one day, <clears throat> Farmer A's cows got loose, knocked over the fence, got into Farmer B's uh, property, walk, walked all over his garden. 
Well, what Farmer B got so angry, he rounded up Farmer A's cows, herded them into his barn, so angry that Farmer A came over to get them. Farmer B said, now listen, you're not going to get one cow back until you pay me for all the damage of the fence and my garden. Farmer A said, I'm so sorry. He said, he wrote him a check. He said, I'm so sorry. He took his cows back, tried to do the best he could fixing the man's garden. Well, the next week, true story I was told, Farmer B's cows got loose and got into Farmer A's yard. And I mean, they did a work in his garden as well as leaving some of their deposits while they were there. And so anyways, anyways, Farmer B comes over and says, I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. He, he, he writes him a check for the damages. He gets his cows and takes them back. That night, there's a knock at his door. The farmer had come over and he said, here's your check. I can't take your money. He said, you have something I don't have. And what you have, I want. Can you tell me, please, what it is? And that farmer led the other farmer to know the Lord Jesus Christ. He took cows trampling down the fence and getting into a garden. But isn't that interesting? Jesus said, if you're my disciple, someone says something ugly about you, hey, you don't go and punch their lights out. You just love them. You just, it was a true story. When I was in Fountain Inn, I was at that at the church that first Baptist Fountain Inn, I was youth director. Of course, I was bringing in some new things, and not everybody loved me there at First Baptist Fountain Inn, but I loved everybody. I really did. And uh, there was a guy, God bless him, he's dead now. And uh, he, he ran one of the drugstores. And I would always say to people how good he was to me because I didn't make that much money. My little girl, Natasha, always had the in inflammation of ears, so we were always buying amoxicillin and going to the doctor. But I'd always say, say to people in found him, you know, Ray has been so good to me. I said, he is so good to us. He is such a fine, fine man. And one member one day was talking to him at the, at the drugstore. And he said, I don't care much about that in New York. I don't like it. I don't like that music he's brought in. I don't like what he's teaching those young people. I don't like what he's doing. I don't like the music they're singing. I just don't like it. And the member said, funny, he thinks the world of you. He did, and I did. Matter of fact, he tells everybody in Rotary Club how good you've been to he and his wife. How many times you wrote pay on his bill and he didn't pay you. Benny Little Brown thinks you're a great man. And even though I knew he didn't care for me, I cared for him. <laughs> and even though I knew he didn't have good things to say about me, I had good things to say about him. And I'm still good. Jesus said, listen, some of these sayings are so hard, don't you retaliate. Number two, quickly, don't resent. Resentment will eat you up. Resentment will cripple you. Ovis, the philosopher, was right when he said resentment and envy are the meanest of vices which creep on the ground like serpents. Resentment can destroy you. And, you know, William Barclay points out that when you slap someone on the cheek what Jesus was saying Jesus said turn the other cheek listen to me carefully here don't miss this teaching all right very quick if you were to slap someone and they slapped you back to be slapped in the face 
with the back of the hand was one of the worst things that could happen to an individual. Rabbinic teaching was you were to never let anyone slap you with the back of their hand. That was the teaching of the rabbis. And yet Jesus said they could turn the other cheek so they could smack you with the back of their hand. He was the great rabbi. And yet rabbinic teaching said you didn't do it. Don't resent. Resentment, I'm telling you, can eat you up. Resentment is that chip that stays on your shoulder. I'm telling you, resentment can, can cloud your vision, cloud your judgment, cloud your jaw. Don't you retaliate. Don't you resent. And then Jesus would also say, don't you quit. When somebody or when life knocks you to the ground, get up. Amen. You know, I hear these stories on TV. Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. Well, I understand that. But I want you to know spiritually, you can get up. The Lord Jesus Christ will pick you up from the miry clay, out of the miry clay. He'll do it every time. He wants you to stand firm. Don't ever quit. I don't care how difficult the sayings of Jesus are. I don't care how, how far you may fall. Yes, you know, like this, ladies and gentlemen. You tell me, rhetorically, the Ten Commandments, they were given to show us what not to do, or they were given to show us how far we fall. I submit to you the Ten Commandments are there to show men and little John how far he's fallen and how far I have to go. It isn't a rule, it isn't a bunch of rules I gotta keep. It's a bunch of rules to show me how far I've fallen. And I need to get up. But I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna keep on. Jesus says, don't you retaliate. Don't you resent. Don't you quit. And lastly, he says, I want you to understand that love is the most powerful force in the world. Love is the most powerful force in the world. You can't fight love. Oh, they might nail you to a cross. That's the only thing the world can do. I'm here to tell you. You cannot fight love. It was Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte in the 1800s that said and made this quote, it's still very profound, that uh, dictator that killed so many millions of people. Napoleon said this, Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Charlemagne, and my self-founded great, great empire. Jesus Christ alone founded his empire upon love. And at this hour, millions of people would die for him. Love is the greatest force. Next time you're confronted with some of the difficult sayings of Jesus, next time when life takes you for a loop, Next time when someone hurts you and hurts you and your family horrifically, don't you retaliate. Don't you resent. Don't you quit. Don't you forget that love is the greatest force in the world. Are you ready to try? Thank you, Rivers, as we pray. You know, loving Father, there are so many things in your word that we all, if we're honest, struggle with. And I pray this morning as we brought this message, we're so grateful for the words that you've spoken to us. We tell you they're hard, 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 hard. But we're not giving up, not with I pray that it will be a learning lesson for everybody, but beginning with me. I thank you. 
We're in the spirit of prayer with your eyes closed, heads bowed. If you're able, I'm going to ask you to stand right now. Please stand in the spirit of prayer. And I'm asking Lord Jesus that you speak to us. Reed, I want you to go back and let's play again one of the songs that we were playing earlier, Glorify Thy Name. Can you play that for me, please, sir? I want that right now. Let's go. And I'm asking you in the spirit of prayer. I'm asking you right now. Maybe you struggle with the Lord Jesus in his own name. Just talk to him and not just sing that. Jesus, Jesus, we love you. We worship and adore you. Thy name in all the earth. Will you do that today? Glorify thy name. Will you? Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. covenant with the Lord Jesus to obey those hard, difficult sayings. I don't know where you are in life, but I pray that whatever the Lord puts on your heart and challenges you to do, please remember in life as a born again believer, his disciple, don't retaliate. Don't resent. Don't quit. And don't ever forget that love is the most powerful force in the world. God help us to never forget that. In the sweetest name we know, Jesus. Amen. Look up this way if you would for a moment. Now listen, I want you to have a great week. And this is what I want you to do now. We uh, have church Wednesday night at 7. But you'll be here. And uh, we're asking you bring a friend. I know these are COVID days. We won't forget these days, okay? One of these days, Kate, when uh, you and, and it's Harper back there, uh, it'll be interesting, Harper, when you and Kate, when when you are, uh, and Mr. Bolin over there, when, when you're 45 and 50, you're going to be telling your children, you won't believe we had to go to church and wear a mask. <laughs> and they're going to say, oh, you did not. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. And you know what you might want to do? Take that mask out of your box. You say, this is what I wore when I was 10 years old. This is what I wore when I was 5 years old. And just show. People won't believe. But listen, it's COVID time, but still invite people to church. Invite them. I know people are reticent to get out. I understand that. I understand. But continue inviting. Continue inviting. <laughs> because one day it'll pay off. Promise. Bow your heads as we offer this closing prayer, this benediction, please. Loving Father, we've been in your place, we've been in your house. We thank you for being with God's people today. And for those who are not here, I know you're with them as well. We love you, we adore you, we glorify your name. And now, as we're the church gathered, in just a moment, we'll be the church scattered. I pray that our God talk will match our God walk in life's labors and life's leisures. We are now departing for the field of mission. And I pray if we enter into the mission field, there is a world looking to see Jesus in us. And I pray we will not disappoint. Dismiss us now as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our loving Heavenly Father, Amen and amen. Have a great day. Bye-bye.